fairly fairly quickly, we could make spacecraft that could roam to other planets for decades on their own without needing to be refueled. I'm researching ways to plan routes for spacecraft so that they can travel the solar system for um, extremely reduced fuel requirements. Um, these paths are called low energy orbits, and traditionally this field has been studied as an application of differential equations. Um, I'm taking a different approach. I'm taking a simulation-based approach. And what I've done in my research is I've created a software system that would allow spacecraft to calculate and fly these low-energy paths. And this could lead to spacecraft that can travel throughout the solar system for essentially no fuel. So here's the analogy I like to use. On Earth, sailing ships are able to use winds and currents, which are natural energy sources, to travel throughout the oceans without fuel. And in the same way, spacecraft can use the gravity and movement of planets um, to travel throughout the solar system. So the trick is to find a way so that you're always kind of falling toward the closest planet. And these paths are very difficult to plan, and that's why we haven't really used low energy orbits in the past. But essentially, we're making a sailing ship for the solar system. It's the same concept. One of the problems with flying low energy orbits is that they're very sensitive. So you need to have a station keeping ability, which means that you need to have very small amounts of propulsion to stay on your orbit. And so what I've done is I've factored that tiny amount of navigational propulsion into my simulations. And I've found that to get to other planets using this tiny amount of propulsion is actually orders of magnitude um, faster than was previously thought. So, you know, and we could use them as exploration crafts. Another possible application is asteroid mining. So if you know the private space industry is going to take over the field, they might want to mine asteroids, which are just chunks of ore sitting there. And if you're going to blast them all the way back to Earth, it's not going to be economical. But if you're able to use low energy paths, it'll take a bit longer, but it would um, uh, see significant profits for mining asteroids. There's so many applications we haven't even thought of. I mean, asteroids is one idea, but if we were able to get throughout the solar system without fuel, what could you do with that? I mean, we can't even think of that because we're not used to it. STS is really awesome. Like, I have met so many people who are so interesting, and I've, I've just had a blast. Like, even the judging sessions, you'd think they'd be really stressful, and they are, but they're so cool, and when you do them right, like, you feel good. It's really fun. Um, I've had so many really good dis discussions about other people's projects and about my project, and people are interested. And it's so it's so rare to walk into a room and someone asks you like, "Oh, what did you do? Like, what what's your passion? What's your research?" And then you pull out your report and you're like, "Oh, I did this and this," and they understand. I mean, it's really cool. The way I found science was that I wasn't pushed into it. I just suddenly realized that I could answer questions for myself. My name is Erica de Benedictus and I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico. How many stars are there versus how big is a laptop in memory? And the answer is no. <laughs> Define a vitamin, and what are all the different vitamins, what do they all do, okay, stuff like that. Uh, apparently, first I was asking like a really hard question that no one understood, and then changed.